I am ready to get started here. I uh, just a little, let me see here. I just want to give you a little bit of uh, an introduction about who I am. Um, and I want to thank you all for being here. I'm super excited. I, I really love uh, doing webinars like this. It's a chance to really uh, answer some questions that you have and to also um, create some engagement. So before uh, watching today, I'm, I'm hoping that you had a chance to watch the video that was done back in December, as Joe had mentioned, because I'm hoping that you're already active on social media, because going forward, we're going to assume that you're already using the space and on the platform. So I just want to talk about, no, Joe already uh, touched on it. So today we're going to talk about where to find posts, how to write engaging posts, how to schedule posts in advance, and how to create a social media calendar. And then lastly, we're going to touch on reputation management, which is very important. So with social media, we're all on it, and but there's three reasons why social media is important for business these days. For one thing, it secures your reputation. If people are searching you out online, um, they'll want to be reading about you, they'll want to learn about your services, and they're, they're curious, and they want to know that you exist and how you can help them. It's a more productive way for you all uh, to reach your target audience and to get your name and services so out there. People are expecting you uh, these days to be using social media. And they're really, um, if you're not on Facebook, if you're not, uh, especially on Facebook, uh, they're almost expecting you to be because it's kind of an, if you want to say a necessary evil, <laughs> if you want to, you know, call it at that, it's, it's, it's demanding now. It, people want that to see you on there. So anyways, looking at so social media stats in Canada, uh, if you want to look at 71% of us who are on social media are on Facebook. I mean, face, Facebook is a mammoth beast. It's huge. Everybody's on it. 49% um, of us, almost half of us are using YouTube. Uh, I guess we love to watch uh, crazy cat videos, perhaps, or we're watching how-to videos. Uh, where YouTube is a huge uh, dominance that is out there. 27% uh, of us who are on social media are using uh, Twitter, followed by Pinterest. Then we're looking at Google+. 21% of us, which is not too far behind Pinterest. And then interest, interestingly enough is Instagram, which is only 20% of us. But I imagine in the next few months, we're going to be seeing Instagram grow in popularity because it's such a simple one image says it all, and it's such a simple medium to be in. So that is growing rapidly, and keep an eye out for that one. And then lastly is LinkedIn. And because a lot LinkedIn is primarily a business site, um, I'll, it's not as used as, as commonly as everybody else in Canada, uh, but Facebook is more for the masses if you look at it that way. So I want to ask you all, and if you want to go to the right-hand side, if you want to go to the chat feature there, um, to have a, I just want to ask the question. What social media channel are you using uh, for CBDC? Are you on social media right now, and which one are you using? If you want to type in your message there to the right, uh, I'm curious to know. Facebook, yeah, that's a huge one. Yep, Facebook, Twitter, newly Instagram, that's great to see. You're going to be seeing a lot of that, Jennifer. Facebook, wonderful. Yep, a lot of us on Facebook. It's 71% it's, uh, of people are, so it's a great space to be in. Facebook and Twitter, you're on none. Oh, hopefully after today, uh, you'll be on there. And uh, just Facebook. And, the, and don't just say just Facebook. Facebook is huge. It's a great one. Uh, and Facebook and Twitter. Wonderful, everyone. Okay, good. That gives me a good sense. And LinkedIn, that's wonderful, Jean-Francois. Um, and it's a wonderful space to capture the business audience. Definitely LinkedIn is very useful. Um, okay, that's great. So now I'm just going to move forward with the next slide. Um, so a lot of us, you know, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on LinkedIn and Instagram, we're wondering, okay, where do I find posts? You know, it's, 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 it can be really challenging if you're first starting out and you're not into your groove uh, to, to find this. So the next question I want to ask you all is, 
do you sometimes have a trouble finding content to post? Or do you guys find it no big deal at all? Or, or, or do you have trouble? I guess you can say yes, no, maybe. I mean, that could be, you can type in your, your chat responses below if you like. Um, I know sometimes starting out, a lot of people struggle with um, finding content. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be a, a, a real challenge, especially if you're in a rut or if it's, a, if it's a, a, something you have to do and it's a task. Sometimes it's just not fun. And, and, I, and I agree with you. Sometimes it can be a little tricky, and it's, and it's fine to admit that. Even I find it sometimes tricky, but, and, and I've been at this for many years. Um, so I'm just going to go here to tell a story. And I love this story because one day, um, or a couple of years ago, I was working with a real estate development company um, that's being developed just outside Nanyak in Nova Scotia. And we were clearing out uh, an engineer's desk or an office. And on his desk was a bag of dirt. And a lot of people saw, saw that as just a bag of dirt. But to me, that bag of dirt represented so much content. Um, and meaning that bag of dirt was going to be sent off to the U.S. Uh, for an environmental sample or environmental study in a lab. And that in itself is an interesting story to tell that the real estate development was very serious about the ground and the soil, was testing it to make sure that it was in tip-top shape, wanted to make sure that the quality of the construction uh, was perfect. And, you know, and also that soil, that could be someone's garden someday that's going to live in that residential community. It could be a playground. It could be a house that's going to be on it. So for me, I, I, I got a lot of great ideas just from seeing that bag of dirt, just by thinking outside the box and, and just being open. So to keep in mind of that, content is everywhere. You just kind of have to know where to look. So here's where you can find ideas that I want to share with you. And ideas are everywhere. And if to find content, maybe celebrate someone or thank someone or recognize. Perhaps it's someone's birthday. Um, maybe you want to um, give a shout out to uh, somebody, a friend of your organization who's done a lot of great things or a volunteer. People love to see pictures of people. I mean, think of us. We're, we're all human. We, we love to uh, read about stories about one another success stories, uh, human interest stories, uh, tragedies. I mean, anything that has an, an emotional element, we're, we're drawn to that. And that's why Hollywood exists, I guess, if you think of it that way. People are drawn to people. To find content, maybe you want to celebrate a milestone. Maybe you have, as an organization, as a region, maybe a client has reached a milestone of maybe they reached their 100th client or they've reached um, many, many different milestones that you can find examples of to celebrate. For example, this here is a golf course that's celebrating their first green that had been completed. It's a 18-hole golf course, and they just finished their first one. So celebrate that. Perhaps this is a client, or it could be your own organization in that way. A lot of us do PowerPoints. And, you know, PowerPoints to me are just hotbeds of content information. I, I love them because from one PowerPoint, you can probably – clean about five to ten or more Facebook posts, and it's just a matter of that. And also, this is new, but you may want to try Facebook Live for you adventurers that are out there. Um, Facebook just last week has announced um, how you can no there's another option other than going live from your mobile phone. You can now go straight from your desk or from your laptop or for, from your computer, which is great. It's slowly being rolled out in Canada. It's been being slowly rolled, rolled out in the U.S. right now. But think of that down the road because you may be able to stream a luncheon or a workshop for people who can, who can no longer be there. It opens up a lot of avenues for you. Sign me up. So every day I uh, get a, a this uh, I subscribe to a social media newsletter. It lands in my inbox every afternoon. And I urge you all to subscribe to industry newsletters because from these newsletters, you'll be able to get a lot of content that you can share on, um, on social media. 
For example, if I read down here on this page, I see 10 key marketing trends for 2017. Okay, there's 10 key marketing trends. To me, that could be 10 posts, one post a day um, that you can share over a 10-day period. There's lots of ideas here that you can get, and just by simply subscribing to emails. More cool things, if you're going to an event, perhaps it's a chamber of commerce, perhaps it's an industry partner that you're going to, give a shout out uh, from the organization that you're at that event and share some tweets or maybe some posts that, that you've learned from, from this event or that you talk to a certain person who's doing wonderful things in the industry, those kinds of things. It's, uh, and events are amazing. And make sure they're related to, you know, to your, your organization for sure. Ask and share. So ask around the office. Um, what activities are your colleagues up to? You know, are there any milestones that were reached? Are there any shout outs who they'd like to recognize? Perhaps they spoke to someone the other day and they really want to give a, 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 you know, a nice um, shout out to. What are they up to? Uh, what are your colleagues? I'm sure everybody is doing wonderful, great things within your organization and they're not getting as noticed. And so why not? Uh, it, it's all for um, promoting your services to your community. You know, and people are always happy to share ideas, I find. So make a habit of asking. I know that when I was working in an office environment, um, don't expect people to come to you to share. I found that I constantly had to go out and ask. And don't let that deter you. Um, it's not on top of people's minds as much, but if you're taking care of the social media, try to make it top of your mind. Perhaps um, make it um, every Monday morning set uh, an, a reminder for yourself to um, ask, ask around the office, you know, ask at the coffee machine, ask, uh, ask at lunch, you know, you're just casually walking by somebody's office, hey, what are you up to? Can I share it? i got to do a Facebook post. What can I talk about? People are always happy to share ideas. They really are. And testimonials are wonderful from satisfied clients. I'm sure you have many. So make sure you've got them jotted down and ask permission before you post. And most of the time, people will probably love to have the shout out and have the recognition on your Facebook page or Twitter and make sure you tag them so they can share it to their networks because it's, a, it's really great reciprocity that, that is held there within social media. And also, there's probably some survey results that you may want to grab as well. Um, maybe you're doing some polling, or um, maybe there's some findings that came from um, Business or Economic Canada that you may want to share. So definitely some ideas are there. Overall, think of quality over quantity. Because our news feeds are bombarded every day with so much content, make sure that the content that you're sharing is quality. And I'd rather see um, five really great posts than 50 of mediocre, if you catch my drift. So make sure what your post is something that's going to be, um, think, place yourself in the other person's shoes. Is this important? Is this going to be interesting to them? It's interesting to me, but it's also going to be interesting to them. So think about that. So think of quality over quantity. A lot of noise out there. So the next one we're going to get into is how to write engaging posts. And let's all look at the power of imagery. Pictures say a thousand words. But if we look at it this way, people remember 10% of what they hear, 20% of what they read, and 80% of what they see and do. So think of it that way. So what are we sharing? Well, on Facebook alone, more posts with photos get noticed. Actually, 70% studies have shown. 10% uh, statuses, just a basic plain status update, 10% of those will get noticed by businesses or by people who are following you. Um, links, uh, posts with links that will take you to an external site, 14%. And videos, 6%. But photos are really big. And in fact, with all of my social media content that I create, all of it has an image attached to it that is related to the post. And I'll show you little tips, tips and tricks on how to work around that in a few minutes. But for the main part is keep it simple. Write a captivating, captivating headline 
uh, make it scannable, easy to digest. We're all buzzing through our news feeds. We're all scrolling on our phones. We're all scrolling through. Think of yourself. So if you have something that's captivating and easy to read, two or three sentences should be able to say it all. People like numbers. Think of it. Top five ways to, um, you know, to uh, clean out your inbox. You know, top five ways. Helpful tips that are just uh, digested into numbers. People kind of like that. Make it simple to read, short text, like I mentioned earlier, two to three sentences should be all you really need to say. Other than that, it's a diatribe and you'll probably lose people um, everywhere. So keep it, keep it simple. And also, if you're using professional imagery, um, give some credit. For example, Pexel is a free stock uh, photo library that I use. It's, it's online, go to pexel.com. I encourage you, you can get some really great uh, wonderful photos there that you can download. Like I said, I'll have anything that's free, and this is it. There's a couple of other websites as well that for the same service, but uh, give that one a try because all the images here that you're seeing in this PowerPoint or in this webinar, they're from Pexel. Keep it tidy. So here's a post here that I want to analyze with you all. It's from the Give Agency. Um, I manage, I co-manage this page. I didn't write this post. But um, just to look at it, though, um, if you look at the Give Agency, when you're writing your post, ever see um, a long URL? Um, the blue arrow was pointing to the link, atlantic.ctvnews.ca. Down below is the video. When you see an image, when you type in a, a, a link like that, and then you see it show up down below as well in Facebook, you can delete that text up above because it's already captured down below. It's already embedded in the post at that point. So you can delete that top line with the HTTP. It just cleans it up really nice and it keeps it tidy. Also, when you go to Twitter, um, because you only have so many characters, it, Bitly is wonderful. And Bitly is a wonderful free service. It shortens long URLs. Sometimes you'll have a URL that is you know, with all bunch of numbers and letters and it's really long. Bitly will take that and crunch it down into a smaller URL for you. It will do it for free and then you can post it into your post. Um, I use that a lot. It just, like I said, I like to keep things neat and tidy because people are scan, people are, you know, scanning through, we're skimming, we're hopping around. The less text that you need to say, the better. Engaging posts. So, Share news from other regions. We're all online here. We're all sharing uh, ideas. Uh, we have this webinar here today, which is sharing ideas with you. But it might be a great idea to follow each other on, on Facebook and support one another and, and what your efforts are. And um, perhaps you already have this, but share uh, posts or share ideas on a closed Facebook group where you all can um, kind of help each other along. Consider a themed week or a month. Um, profile a successful client. Uh, maybe there, I'm sure you have many that you may want to give a shout out to. Also a fun one is these hashtags already exist. They're already searchable within Twitter. Um, but you know, with Motivation Monday, you can probably get some really great um, thought inspiring quotes on uh, how to start up your own business. Um, that yes, you can do it kind of thing. Or you may want to share a tip uh, every Tuesday. You might, may want to share. There's lots of tips out there. And also maybe a throwback Thursday. You can probably have some fun with it uh, where you can do an old typewriter or you can look at your community and, and have a look back in 1950s, that kind of thing. Go to your library and get some images. Make sure you credit the source. But uh, and there's also TGF Friday. There's all kinds of things you can, you can, have, you can play with and have fun with too which is how to create a social media calendar. So break things up into the rule of thirds. You have ideas for content. You're, you're brainstorming with your staff and your colleagues, and you're coming up with all kinds of wonderful ideas. But try to break things into rules of thirds. And what I mean by that is a third of your content should be original content that are things that are happening within the office, things that are happening with your colleagues, uh, shout-outs and that sort of thing. 
Also, a third of your content should be about promoting uh, CBDC services and uh, how you contribute and how people can benefit from, from your services. And then another, the, the other third of your content should be sharing ideas and stories from thought leaders and partners and fellow agencies. This is where your emails or your e-newsletters where you're extracting information um, from other people and giving credit. So if you break things into thirds, it gives a little bit better because if you're constantly promoting yourself and talking about yourself, that's really not what social media in essence is really all about. It's a lot of reciprocity. It's a lot about education. It's a lot about, a lot about sharing. So if you're constantly promoting and talking about yourself, you're probably not going to get as many engaged followers as you would like. Content calendar setup. So plan your content around key events in your industry or important dates. Perhaps there's an upcoming conference. Maybe there's a workshop that's being held. So plan your content around that. Maybe even look at Valentine's Day or think of March break or think of Easter or what have you. We also have a family day that's coming up in February. So maybe think of some content around that and look at some of your clients that maybe you can shout out to because maybe there are services, maybe there's a flower shop or that uh, you might want to give a, or a few sh flower shops who have uh, been your clients that you may want to give a shout out to for Valentine's Day. Have a staff meeting. Um, it's always good to embed this into your regular agenda um, whenever you have one, just to talk about social media and, and give ideas. Like I said earlier, you will always kind of have to ask people and keep it fresh, fresh in their mind. So maybe having it as a standing item for a staff meeting is probably a really great idea. Divide up writing posts ahead of time. Maybe instead of it just being yourself who's taking care of all the social media, maybe there's two of you or maybe three of you in, in your office who might want to give it a try. Uh, you know, it's always good to get together and just divide and conquer. It, it's probably uh, a nice way to lighten the load because you're all busy doing other things as well. And social media shouldn't really be a, a task and something that you kind of, um, it's like, oh, I got to do that again. Um, I think you have to probably shift your thinking around to this is something we have to do. Look at your content assets. Have a look at some videos you may have produced or that are available in the resource library for you to have, or uh, have a look at PowerPoint presentations which you've made or your colleagues have made, and extract a lot of tidbits and information from those. Content calendar sample. So this is uh, really a high-level look at, at a, a, a content calendar sample. Uh, for example, remember we went back into Taylor Head and we looked at the days of the week and the times that are popular that people are looking at the posts? Well, keep that in mind here. So on Facebook, maybe Thursday nights are, are, the, are the wonderful time or Tuesday afternoons at 3 is the magical hour. Consider that when you're planning your month in advance, what you're going to be doing on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays. You know, for Tuesdays, that could be where you have your Tip Tuesday or your Motivational Mondays, and then you write them all out, what you're going to be sharing on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. It's, um, I suggest maybe you all uh, jot it down on a, a dry erase board perhaps or write it on a chalkboard, what have you, and then everybody can see it, and then everybody can perhaps contribute to it or write down a note, say, next Thursday is a workshop. Let's, let's just do some promotion around that and let's share um, and maybe let's do some live tweeting or some Facebook posts while we're at that workshop, that sort of thing. Types of content. Um, just some additional ones here is to look at maybe share an article that you've seen somewhere, maybe do a link to a blog post, uh, consider holidays like I mentioned earlier, maybe Valentine's Day or, or Family Day that's coming up. Um, think of something inspirational, maybe a quote um, that's uh, motivating, uh, share an infographic, an interesting photo, uh, share a webinar that everyone may be able to partake in. Um, think of events that are coming up, videos, promotions, how-tos, lists, tutorial questions, and so on. These are just, uh, just the iceberg of, of types of content that you can share and think of when you're putting your calendar together. This is an example of one that I've done recently. Oh, this is just a piece of one that I've done recently for a client. 
And these are generic posts. And what we're going to be, what we're committed to is on Facebook of doing 25 generic posts per month, basically about four or five a week. And on Twitter, we're committed to 50 generic posts per month. And, you know, and the type of content that we will be sharing, we're going to be, you know, looking at educational and thought-inspiring posts. We're going to be looking at campaign promotion and event promotion from partners who we work with. And then on the right-hand column, the frequency of posting, we're going to be committed to two times a week, three times a week, one day prior, you know, weekdays, that kind of thing. It, light, it just makes it a little bit easier to plan out in advance what the content calendar can look like. It's not granular. It's not going to be like this post on this day at 10 o'clock. It's really high level. It's, it's um, like I said, it shouldn't be too um, um, onerous of a, of a task. And um, keep, it, keep it simple to say twice a week we're going to do a post, whether it's twice on a Tuesday or spread out over a period of a few days. How to schedule posts. And I'm a huge fan of scheduling posts. I love how I know that the month ahead, I know that I've got a whole bunch of posts in the can that I can just sit back and they're just going to go out at certain hours and times. I love that. And then, of course, that doesn't get away from me doing a post every day that is more um, relevant to that day. But at least then I will have a whole bunch of ones in the can. And, and here's how you can do it. So we're going to have a look here at Josie Construction. This is a client of mine in the States, and he uh, happens to be my brother, and I help him with his social media content. So here's his page. And as well, you, where I can share a photo, um, I can look at scheduled posts. So you can do it two ways. I like to post directly from Facebook. Right now, I, I kind of jump around. I'm between Hootsuite, which is a free service, or uh, I look at Facebook. So if I'm Facebook particularly, um, I like to schedule from. So how to do it, it's really quite simple. I can write my text here. And then when I click over here to the drop down, I can go schedule. And then I can schedule it for whenever I want. I can do it for as far in advance as I like. I can either pick the day and then I can just schedule. I'm not going to schedule it now. But that is an example of how you can do it. No, I just want to exit. But let's see, I've got 18 scheduled posts in the can. So let's have a look at them. And here they are. I've got him scheduled way up into, let's see, the end of February. So the whole month of February, he's pretty golden. He's got a few posts a week that are there, really quite simple. If I want to open one up, I can. Let's say I'm not happy with that post. I'm going to say I want to do it on another day or a different time, I can edit that. No problem. I can switch that around. There's the post. I can edit it right here. So let's see. Maybe I want to reschedule it for another day. I can easily do that right here and click reschedule, and off I go. And I love it how I can look in advance. So probably by the middle of February, I will start to look at the month of March and just dedicate uh, a morning or an afternoon and hammer out a bunch of posts and schedule them all for March. I can go as far ahead as I like, and I, and I love that feature. It's right inside Facebook, or you can go to Hootsuite as well. And Hootsuite can also do Facebook and Twitter, and because Twitter doesn't have a scheduling platform uh, within, uh, you have to use Hootsuite for, for Twitter, uh, unlike Facebook. So, and also Instagram as well, Hootsuite can do it for you, but they send you a reminder of when you need to post, which makes it a little bit cumbersome. Um, I subscribe to a service with Instagram called Grum, G-R-U-M dot com, and I think it's $59 a month. I subscribe to it um, because I have clients who I have uh, them with, and uh, that's the way I get around Instagram. And, and um, so scheduling is definitely the way to go. It, uh, it, it, it puts you ahead in that way. So as I mentioned here, just to review, when you want to write something, you click on Publish, drop down, Schedule, and then there is an example of all the posts that are there. Also consider Hootsuite. It's a free service um, and, and Grum as well. 
Next, we're going to bump, uh, go into reputation management, which is very important uh, with the uh, business uh, that you are in because uh, you're very forward facing and you're representing um, an important uh, role. So for reputation management, it's all about building trust. Social media reputation management is the process of tracking negative social media material about your organization to improve your name or standing. People are talking about you, and you'd rather be part of that conversation than not being part of the conversation, meaning not being on social media at all. It's kind of like one of those things, if you have something to tell me, tell me to my face, and I'd rather know about it. So this is what social media reputation management is all about, because you can be part of righting a wrong or giving your side of the story to someone else's. So if it's done properly, it adds credibility to your clients and then therefore it will strengthen their trust in your organization. And here's, um, you know, ways that you can do it. It's important to listen to what people are saying about you. Don't be afraid to respond to negativity. In fact, it's probably welcome. Um, don't delete a comment. As much as you would love to, don't do it. And, uh, and I'll tell you why. And I want to show you a couple of uh, examples in the next slide. But before I do that, I want to just put it out there. It's good to ask people for reviews on your Facebook page because um, people will, um, will probably will share really great things about you. Um, if you're looking for a dentist, uh, I'm probably going to be going on Facebook and seeing what kind of reviews they have. You know, people are doing their research. I mean, nowadays the, the hands are in the control of the consumer uh, where uh, the people are, 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 you know, people are relying on other people for reviews. And so it's good to ask for them. If nothing to hide, ask away. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. So for IKEA, with their reputation management, here's how they take care of things. We had a person here. Desiree, she wasn't happy with her kitchen. Um, she spent two hours in their store, and they lost their her design for her store. So it was two hours wasted from her life, apparently. And so IKEA got back to her right away and said, thanks. They acknowledged her. Thanks for writing back. Um, thanks for letting us know. We want to make sure this doesn't happen in the future. We want to wrong this right or right this wrong. I mean, sorry. But they are dedicated to the product. They, if this, if this post was deleted, you can tell that Akuda went wrong in so many ways. But IKEA has people on all the time, and so do a lot of major accounts. They have people who are responding to posts. They want to get down to the issue and fix the issue as best as they can, and they're transparent about it. And it's really great to see. People like to be recognized. People like to be addressed that they're having a problem. And that's just the way businesses are run these days. And, in fact, here's one uh, tweet here from somebody who says, I hate Flying United. Well, within a few hours or within minutes, United tweets back and says, yikes. That bums us out. What's going on, Jordan? So they're trying to fix the situation. What you know, they want to have continue on that conversation because they care about their product and they care about their reputation. So key takeaways from today. As I'm nearing the end here, let's see what time do we have here? It's 12:42. We're looking pretty good here for time. So the key takeaways are: post consistently. I really discourage you from posting once a month. And then in April, posting again. And then in September, oh, I got to post, I got to post again. Try to put yourself on a regular track. And remember, quality versus quantity. So post consistently, align with CBDC standards, uh, with the graphic standards, and also with your messaging. So make sure you're aligned with that. And, um, you know, maybe sharing crazy cat videos aren't really aligned with CBDC but maybe someone produced those and it went viral and it happened to be a client of yours selling a product, well, by all means, if it's aligned with, with your mission and, you know, uh, share away. And also support each other. It's, uh, it, it lightens the load. It's uh, a wonderful way to help each other along, and uh, there's various ways in how you can do that. So I want to thank you for listening along to me yammering. 
if you have any questions following the webinar or after today, send me an email. I'm happy to, to, uh, to talk to you further. I'm passionate about social media. Uh, I'm a little bit of an extrovert in that way. And uh, I, you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm on all the mediums. In fact, I encourage you to because I share a lot of tips and information that you can, you can take and apply to your own social media accounts. So with that, uh, there's Ellie, and uh, I'm here to answer some questions. And Joe, I don't know, um, I have my window closed. There's probably all, time, all kinds of questions out there. Yep, uh, Maria, I was just uh, checking the chat there as we're, you were presenting, and there's no questions uh, there, some few comments. Uh, and, we uh, do infographic. Like, yeah, great person. Thoughts on best way to generate page likes and followers? Okay, that's a question from Vicki. So, Vicki, um, the best way to do it is organically, and that is by um, probably doing some really great, um, um, really great posts that are educational. It all comes down to the content. But as well, um, Vicki, remember when I showed you earlier on how to tag people? We, we tagged Hike Nova Scotia. So in images or in posts, feel free to tag other organizations or other people. And then those people, if they're not following you, they, they will follow, follow you. So that's a great way to generate page likes and so on. And um, let's see, there's, that could be a whole webinar right there and how to generate page likes and followers. And maybe we can talk about that at, you know, at another time. But um, it, it, it's, the best, it's the best content that you can share, the better. Also, to, get to put it in your newsletters. Share it out there to your emails. Put it in your email signatures or put it into your print materials. Um, put it, make it as easy as possible for people to follow you. Okay. All right. Um, thanks, Maria. Um, You're welcome. You go, um, anybody have any questions, you can uh, unmute your line and, and ask a question, or you can uh, enter it in the chat uh, feature there. We'll, we'll stay on the line for a few more minutes, uh, or as long as need be, if the questions continue to come. So I'll just leave the line open. Anybody would like to ask a question or type it in the chat? That's great. Yeah, it was, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's getting lots of great feedback here. Thank you, everybody. It's, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun putting this together. And um, like I said, it's just a matter of getting out there. Why doesn't video rank higher? Um, rank higher with, uh, in the Canadian stats you mean, or rank higher in general? Um, Richard, did you want to maybe elaborate a little bit more on that? Um, Video is actually gaining ground. It's, it's amazing how video is going to really, okay, yeah, it, video is going to, it, it's on its way. It, it's, it's building a lot of traction. The thing is with video, it's probably best to keep it around a minute to a minute and a half in length because um, I think a lot of people, um, um, it, uh, People, people's attention spans, they're very short. So keep in mind that the shorter the video, the better. But, uh, yeah, watch video, it's going to explode. 2016 was the year of video, and 2017 is going to be the year of video and live video. And so keep that in mind. So with those stats that I shared, that's probably why YouTube was really important, because a lot of links that we share on Facebook and Twitter are linked to YouTube. So a lot of people are going to that, and that's just, going to get even better. So, Vicki, one thing you can do is in your personal profile, say you work at CDC Labrador, some people view your page and see where you work. Exactly. That's great, Vicki. You know, it's wonderful to, uh, or Mark, um, there's lots of ideas to, to, to shout it out there. And in fact, if a lot of you are on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is wonderful because it's the business environment, but as well, snuff up your LinkedIn profile pages as well. Um, because if you're going to be posting things about your work and organization, um, LinkedIn is, is, is a great way to uh, affirm your, your reputation management. All right. All right, folks, any other questions uh, for Maria? As she mentioned, she has her email there, uh, and you can mm -hmm. fire an off email to her. 
Let me go. Um, Oops, I'm not at the gonna, end. Okay. Sorry. There. There I am. So, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to uh, make this available uh, to you folks, uh, the audio portion as well as the video. We'll put it together in a, in a package and send it out. Uh, and those ones that couldn't be with us today have a chance to view it as well. Uh, and then we're also going to look at doing uh, further up, uh, uh, sorry, follow-up uh, uh, webinar um, from this sometime between now and, and uh, March. And what I'll be doing is sending out uh, uh, just an exit survey on this just to see the content, uh, what other things you'd like to see in terms of webinars, and, and we'll do another Lunch and Learn uh, coming up in, in, the, in the next couple months. So hearing no further questions, uh, uh, I'd like to thank everybody today for taking the time to uh, jump on the call. I uh, wish you uh, a great uh, rest of the day, and uh, we'll chat soon.